Hello everyone, in today's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make advanced menu behavior. Now what I mean by advanced menu behavior is basically keeping track of multiple rows of values here and not having them set back to normal. What I mean by this is typically if I was to have two rows of things here, so just A, B, C, one, two, three, these are all actually icon buttons and we want these to basically correspond to buttons on a script. So if I click on B, it's going to highlight B, but th these aren't going to change. And as well, if I go down a row, it's not going to remember my selection up here. So how can we make it so that we can not only change the images here, but also keep track of two different rows of selections. So today we're going to be creating a script that does just that. Anytime we click on something, not only does it change the image, it's also going to keep track of it when we make a selection on another row. So I can change things down here and it doesn't affect anything up here. This is a super useful feature for making advanced menus for your users and allows you to have a lot more dynamics with your UI. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll create a new JavaScript file and let's also realize we're going to need some images. So in my example, I have images for one, two, three and ABC, each with an on and off state. The on state is blue with a black background and the off state is just white with the transparent background. So what I want is anytime a, something is deselected, it needs to be white text. And anytime I click on it, it needs to turn into this blue color. So to get started, I'm going to set up a string for where my buttons are located. In my case, they're just in my videos folder. So I'll call a variable called resource string and I'll set it equal to double quotations, my path. And in my case, I need to actually put two of these slashes for each because in JavaScript, it requires you to put two of these slashes to equate to one. Next, we're gonna to wanna to set up variables for each of our image files. So each of these PNG files needs to be localized in our script. So first I'll just call A and I'll say A on and I'll have an A off as well. And then I'll do the same thing for B, C, one, two, three, and that should be good. Now for each of these, we're gonna to wanna to set them equal to a new file. And inside of here, we're gonna put the path we want the files to be. So we're gonna use our resource string we just set up, which references the folder where all these are located. And then on top of our resource string, we wanna add the file name. So for the A on, we just have it called A on. So we can literally just copy this and paste it in here. So our resource string plus A on, and then we can go ahead and just go down the list and copy and change this so that it matches with each of these. We can just change this to off, B on, B off, and so on. All right, now that we have all of these stored, the next step is to set up an array for each of our rows. So remember in our example, we have two rows here, first one with letters and the second one with numbers. So I'm actually gonna set up four arrays, two for each row and one for each state. So row one with the on states, row one with the off states, and then the same for row two. So I'll call row one ons, row one offs, row two ons, and row two offs. What these are basically gonna do is hold each chunk of these. So inside of row one ons, we want to put inside of an array. We want A on, B on, and C on. These are our on images. And then for row one offs, we'll just change it from A on to B off. And then for row one offs, we'll just change it to off. And then for row two ons, we're just gonna change it to the same thing except with our numbers. And that should do it right there. Now we have an array where we can reference all of our images in a more organized way. Now let's create a variable for each of the rows to track what selection we have. So let's say they select A, our row one selection would be equal to one. Actually, let's start it at zero because that's good programming. And then we'll also have one for row two selection, also equal to zero. So this will correspond to A and one, and if we change it to B, for example, it will change our row selection to one. If you make a rule like this and you think it's gonna be complicated, then make sure you add some comments just to be like uh, zero equals A and one, one equals B and two, 
and two equals C and three. That way you can reference it later and not be confused. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start up the UI here. So we'll just start with a main window and we'll set this equal to a new window of type palette. We'll just call it advanced menus and undefined size and all that. Then we'll set it to be a column so it goes top to bottom. So we'll set the orientation equal to column. And then we'll create two groups. The first one will be our letter group and the second one will be our number group. So for each of these, we're gonna add it to our main window, add it as a group, the undefined values and just call it its name, which in this case is letter group. And we want each of these to go from left to right. So we need to set the orientation to row. And then for each one of these, we're gonna want three image holders for each of the items here. So I'll just say var a image, B image, and C image. The reason I'm leaving space is because I'm going to define each of their sizes immediately afterward, which in my case, I exported them as 20 by 20 pixels. So I'll go ahead and paste this below each of them and just change the name here. And now for each of our images, we're gonna wanna set this equal to, in this case, it's inside of our letter group. So we're gonna add an icon button, which can hold an image as well, undefined size. And for our image of our icon button, we're going to use A on, which is going to be our default value when A is clicked. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this for the next two letters. And I'll change this to B off and C off because when we start up the script, we want these two to be deselected and A to be selected. Now I can actually just copy and paste this entire group and change it for the numbers group. So I'll change letter group to number group and I'll just copy and paste it into all the instances here. And then instead of A, B, and C image, we'll say one, two, and three. And instead of A on, we need one on. Instead of B off, we need two off. And instead of C off, we need three off. And then I'm also gonna set up an array so we can control all of the image holder elements inside of the UI. So for the letter group, I'll say row one array, which is our A, B, and C, is gonna equal our one image, two image, and three image. And sorry, that one goes down here. This should be for row two array for our number group. Row one array should be A image, B image, and C image. All right, now let's go ahead and show our UI. So I'll say main window dot center and main window dot show. And let's run it in After Effects, make sure it looks right. And it looks like it's giving us invalid image data. Uh, it looks like we need to add another slash on here, I think. Yes, there we go. So all of these are good. We lo it looks like we forgot to change the size of our second row image or we forgot to change the names actually. So we'll change that real quick. And now, and now if we run it, everything is looking good. Now the behavior is not quite what we need. So let's go ahead and program that. So whenever we click on B or C here, it changes to on, changes A back to the off state. And if we go to another row, it will remember that behavior. So to do this, we're going to be assigning on click functions to all of our buttons here. So just to set up how it's going to work for each of them, we'll start with our A image and we'll say on click. So whenever they click on our A image right here, we'll set it equal to a function. And inside of our function here, first thing we wanna do is tell the script, all right, we're clicking on A, we need to set the row one selection to its appropriate value, which if we remember is zero. So we'll set row selection equal to zero. And this will tell the script to remember in row one, right now our selection is this first element. Then we're gonna set up a function called clear rows. What this is gonna do is clear everything. The reason we wanna clear everything is just to wipe everything clean, and then we'll use these row one and row two selections to set our values on or off. So we'll say clear rows, and let's go ahead and define our clear rows function really quick and write it. 
And inside of here, what we're going to do is say in a for loop, we're going to set var i equal to zero. And while i is less than our row one array dot length, increment i up by one. It doesn't matter which row you use here because we're going to use both of them and clear them at the same time. So we're going to say row one array uh, index i. And we're going to take the image and we're going to set it equal to our row one offs index i. And then the same thing, we're going to grab our row two array, grab it, the image for the current one we're on, and set it equal to our row two offs. This is just going to run through each of the elements here and then run through each of our offs and set the images all to off. So if I just go ahead and run this and click on A, you can see it clears everything for us. And that's just showing us that the clear rows function is working. After we've cleared the rows, we need to do two things. We need to set the first row selection and the second row selection. So I'll say row one array, and we want to grab the row one selection element, which in this case, if we click on A, would make it zero. So we want to say inside of our row one, grab number zero, and set the image equal to our row one ons, row one selection. So again, we're using our row one and row two selections to dictate everything here. When we click on A, row one selection becomes zero. So when we grab row one array, which has A, B, and C, all these images here, we're gonna take the image and set it equal to off. So if you can't tell by now, we're basically gonna be using row one selection and row two selection to dictate everything. Row one selection here is telling us that we just clicked on row one and we also wanna change the row one selection one to on. So now if we go down below and set the same thing for row two array, inside of our second array, we'll grab row two selection. And the same thing, we'll set the image to our row two ons and our row two selection. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this five times and just change it up here. So change it to B, C, one, two, and three. And then we just need to change this row one selection to zero. If it's B, our selection needs to be one. If it's C, our selection needs to be two. And then instead in, of row one selection here, this needs to be row two selection, because now we're dealing with one, two, three. If it's one, it needs to be zero. If it's two, it needs to be one. And if it's number three, row two selection should be two. All right, so this actually should be it. We should have a fully functioning menu now. If we click on multiple areas in different rows, we get memorized behavior and it doesn't mess up anything. So again, just to recap, we're basically organizing all of our images into a couple of arrays up here. Then we're also organizing our actual image holder UI elements into arrays as well. And each time we click on one of these icon buttons, we're telling the script, Remember this selection. The user has now selected B, which means that it should be one for the row one selection. Then go into our array of image holders, get the first element, which would be B in this case, and set it to on. Hopefully that makes sense, and it's a pretty simple way to program advanced menu behavior. If that was confusing, just go back or ask any questions you have in the comments. But that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for more videos and hit the bell icon to be notified of when they come out. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.